Welcome to Grand Masters Power Custom. I want to introduce the Grand Master Series products that are oriented towards the 1022 Rimfire Marketplace. Power Customs work closely with custom shooting technologies to produce the highest quality products of advanced design. These are precision manufactured by CNC and EDM processed from the finest material available, which produces the highest quality products of today's industry. The first products that we're going to cover is the Grandmaster receivers and their variations, the Grandmaster trigger housing, CST's last shot hold open, and the Power Custom match grade breech block. This is our Receiver, the receiver incorporates a rear tang screw bracket. Now if this bracket is not needed for your custom alteration, all you have to do is simply remove it and discard it. All receivers come with a hole machined in the rear of the back of it. This allows you access to the center line of the bore with a cleaning rod. It's sealed with a plastic plug. All you have to do is push that plug out. This gives you access to the center line of the bore. This is our, same as our standard Grandmaster receiver. The only difference in this one is that it has a solid Picatinny scope base machine with the receiver. I don't know of any way having that more rigid than having it out of the same piece. Other options are the same, except that we do not have a rear tang bracket screw. This is more similar to the factory receiver, but it does have a clean out plug in the back for access to the center line of the bore. And that's the one that we just call our integral scope mount model. This is the Grandmaster Deluxe. It's the same type of receiver, only it has the addition of a removable scope base. On the top of it, access is with an Allen wrench in the back. Usually you'll have a, this is a target base with a 20 MOA, but usually you'll get it with a zero MOA. This base here is your zero MOA. It pulls the base to a V-block system that guarantees repeatable return. So this is a zero MOA. Want to change it, simply unscrew the screw and you'll get to a certain point. You'll see the base start backing up. Now it's starting to back up, pulling the Wedges out of the V-slots, it can be removed, put on your target base, which is generally used for a larger powered target scope, where the zero MOA was generally used for a quick access sighting system or a low powered scope. Fast interchange. This is what we call our Grandmaster Deluxe right here. All right, the Grandmaster Power Trigger Housing Complete. Our standard version has a standard ejector similar to the factory. We have designed it to be more user friendly, has an internal safety, which is inside the trigger housing, similar to some of the military model weapons of years ago. It also has a magazine release latch directly in front of the trigger housing. And it has an adjustable trigger system. There's an over-travel screw in the trigger here. For over-travel, one inside for sear engagement. These are preset by us before they leave the shop in high-strength Loctite and should never ever be altered. If you have a problem, you need to send the trigger housing back to us. The only other thing that you might want to do in the rear of the trigger housing is a set screw for a spring on your trigger. The way they come, they'll be about two and a half, two and three quarter pound. You can unscrew this screw and lighten the trigger spring enough to where you end up with about a one and three quarter pound pull. And it can't be any lighter because the trigger 
return spring has to overcome the disconnector spring in order for the trigger to return forward. And that's going to end up when you get done with about a pound and a half or pound and three quarter trigger at the very lightest. You can increase it on up to as much as four pounds plus on your trigger pull. That's the standard Grandmaster trigger housing. The other trigger housing we come is what we call the Grandmaster Deluxe. It's exactly the same thing, only it has Mike Irwin's CST last shot hole open, which is that device right there. And all it does is replace the factory style ejector. It replaces a factory style ejector. And you'll see it right here and we'll explain to you exactly how it works at a later date in the shop. But that's how that works. When the last shot is fired, the actuator drops down, the rear of it comes up and holds the bolt open from this point right here. In conjunction with that, trigger housing, you have to have the Power Custom match grade bolt. This bolt is one half of an ounce lighter than your standard bolt. Has a firing pin and, and extractor already fitted to it. All you have to do is drop it in to replace it. And our bolt is a little bit smaller right here in this area here. And with titanium parts in it, it will be at least a half ounce lighter than factory. Precision made quality. And you'll see this recess right here. You have to have our bolt to have that in it. So when it has the last shot, that end of the CST hole open goes in that hole. And that's what holds your bolt open or your breech block open at the last shot. And then when you push up on this point, it pulls it down and lets the bolt go shut. So we'll explain that in the shop when we put these in a receiver. All right, we're back in the shop now. We're going to interchange some of these parts. And here's what we have. Here's an already built up custom 1022. This has our receiver, our extended operating bolt handle, has the Ruger factory trigger housing with our internal parts. We're not going to discuss the internal parts today because they are discussed in other areas on the tube and also we have a video that shows you how to install all of the internal parts that we make for the Ruger 1022. So what we're going to do today, we're going to change this trigger housing and this factory bolt to our match grade bolt, our Grandmaster Lux trigger housing with the last shot hold open. And basically you disassemble this the same way as you would a regular Ruger 1022. You start here with the screw that holds the barrel and receiver in the stock. Unscrew that screw. Now when you take the receiver and barrel out of the stock, the safety has to be centered or it'll hit the edge of the stock. This is normal with all Ruger 1022s or aftermarkets. So that's all you do is take it apart like that. Now we're getting down to the bare mechanical parts of this firearm. We're going to take the trigger housing out. The bolt handle and bolt is forward. Easy way to do that. Hammering a punch. Remove the pins. Trigger housing is ready to be removed. Basically, we will not use any portion of this in the future. So we set that aside. We remove the buffer. Next thing we remove, that'll allow the breech block to come further to the rear so we can disengage the breech block from the operating handle. There you are. Now we're going to put our match grade breech block in it, which is this one here. 
simply goes in there like that, but you have to do it at the right time. So you have to compress the mainspring, put the breech block in, like that. All right, that's engaged. Now all we have to do is put the buffer back in. And when you put the buffer in, you have trouble getting it in. All you have to do is push your breech block back and take something like the wooden hammer handle and because the breech block will line up the other side of your buffer in your receiver. Now we're ready to put our trigger housing in. And as you see on this one, we won't be using the tang screw bracket. So it's been removed and we're not gonna use it with this type of stock. So we take our trigger housing, which is our Grandmaster Deluxe with the CST hold open, last shot hold open. And I'll show you how that works. Here's you a one round in a magazine, which is not good to have ammunition in the shop where you're working, but this is for demonstration and we will be careful. When you put the magazine in the receiver and everything's together, it slides up this area here and latches on to your magazine latch. The cartridge itself is holding the actuator up so the rear of the last shot hold open is below the trigger housing Therefore, it will not hold open. When you shoot the last shot, then this last round is gone. The magazine's empty, and there's a voided area right there, and the actuator on the last shot is down in that voided area. This comes up and catches that notch in your breech block that I showed you earlier. So it's very simple. Now the other part is that we design and patent pending. This is your kick out spring. It goes in this area right here. Now this is a little bit hard to assemble because of the spring tension. If you get it just right, it's not too bad. You put it in and hold the short end down, then compress that around, the tail around, and there you are. So that's in, sometimes you have to hold it in until you get it in the receiver. So here's your receiver. We're gonna gently turn this upside down. Now there's one thing I didn't tell you. See this area right here on your catch assembly for your magazine catch? I've had to fit this because the magazines, the 10 round, all of the magazines in fact, but I've measured these 10 round magazines and they vary as much is 15 thousandths in size. And sometimes when you put all this together, you can't get the magazine in, get it in all the way, hold it in, the latch won't spring loaded latch, see? So you have to fit this little point here and there's instructions that come with this on how to fit that area. So when it goes in, it'll latch, just like that. So we're ready to put this in the receiver. Be sure the spring's held in Turn it upside down, just like that. We're in the receiver. And we turn it over and look to see that our holes are lined up. Take the pin, now you'll notice all our receiver pins, when you have it to this point and you take the firearm apart and you get to this point, the, none of the pins will fall out. All of our pins are machined to close tolerances and they are tight in the receiver. And you want them flush, flush with the receiver. Okay, this is our action completely together, ready to go test fire. See it held open on the last shot. And want to release it, just push up on that. This works the magazine. Now, get rid of the loaded 22 shell. Here's our magazine, put it in like that. And you'll see that it compresses the spring. Now it's loaded as if it was in the receiver. You shoot the last shot, Mag the bolt stays open. You want to change magazines. Magazine spring loaded kicks out, saves that reaching up here and trying to pull it out. Now it has to be free from the stock when you put the stock on. You cannot have the stock rubbing in the magazine to pinching it so it'll bind up. 
So that appears to work right there. So what we can do, and we can check the trigger pull. These trigger pulls are generally two and a half pounds. And I've redone this one. I adjusted it. Here's your adjustment screw. Turn it counterclockwise to make it lighter or clockwise to make it heavier. I move back this screw off and then we can weigh it. If you really want to get a good weight, these are real handy, but I prefer, if you want to know exactly what it is, to use the old system with the, with the regular weights to lift it. Now, it's cocked, it's in there. We'll weigh the trigger. And you got to watch that scale and you read it just as the number changes because if you keep pulling it'll weigh more than what it really is. There's one pound, eight ounces, nine ounces, one pound, 11 ounces. So that's basically slightly under one and three quarter pound. So we're ready to assemble this back in the stock. What we'll do with that is just like that. There it is, ready to go. Have a round in the magazine, close the thing, you're ready for test fire. So what we'll do is take this out and test fire it and check it out. All right, we're out here ready to test fire this. This is a 10 round magazine. Install it. Be sure your latch latches. Generally it'll latch when it's fitted right. Chamber around. Last shot hole open. All right, we changed the magazine. This one's only loaded with two rounds. Last shot works. All trigger housings before it leaves the shop here, we test fire with two shots 10 times to be sure everything's working good. So there's your last shot hold open on a test fire. We're gonna talk about the Van Dyke Tactical 22. This is a chassis, and when you receive it from us, it'll be just like this with two screws holding on a grip adapter. Now it takes a AK grip, and we generally use the Hogue AK grip, but there's other factories out there that manufacture aftermarket parts, so there's other grips that'll fit it, but generally with us, we always like the Hogue grip. Now when you get it, it'll have this bracket on the receiver, or chassis rather, it'll have this bracket on the chassis and that screw here. Now if you're gonna use one of our Grandmaster Deluxe alterations or the regular Grandmaster that has this tang screw bracket on it, what you do, you have to unscrew this screw here, totally move that screw, and I'll show you how it goes in. Then when you get all of your receiver assembly together, like this one here, it'll have this bracket on the back, and all it does is go in there like that and drop in. That way you can replace this screw here, and when it's all together, replace the front screw also, and that's what holds it in the chassis. It's held by both ends, very rigid. Now, on this receiver that we have here that we're gonna put in this chassis, we're not going to use this screw because see, this is our new receiver without the tang screw bracket on the rear, which is similar to a regular factory one. So all we do is leave this screw in all the way, tighten it, because that also helps hold your grip on. That's all you do. Now this is ready to be, have all of the other parts installed. Now what we do on this, this is gonna be the pistol version of it. We're using our Grandmaster trigger housing coupled with our Grandmaster receiver, which has the integral base machine with the receiver. So 
That's why it does not have the tang screw bracket on the rear. Now with our regular Grandmaster trigger, it does not have the last shot hold open on it. So all we do is get to this point here. This is your adapter, which works just like the 1022 barrel when it goes in the receiver. See, it goes in like that. You, then you take this and put, I like the ball drive screwdriver Allen assembly. You can't tighten all of them up. You gotta tighten it part way. There we go. Just tighten it snug and tighten the other one. Once it gets pulled up, you tighten it, both of them up. All right, that's our adapter on the front of our receiver. Now we're ready to install a receiver into the chassis. Simple matter, put it up like that, turn it over, put a screw in it. All right, now we're ready for the pistol grip. This particular, has, particular screw is a Phillips screw, and we also have some, which will be, at a later date, will be an Allen screw. There's six millimeter screw. All right, now we're that far, far, or that far. We are this far with it now. Now, the next thing we do is install a barrel. You'll see this Power Custom carbon fiber tension barrel. So you have the nut here for the tension, and then you got your uh, flash suppressor on the front of it. There's your rear end for the chamber. So all you have to do is put that in, line this pin up with that and back. Now the front hand guards, forearms, there's all different versions of these from various manufacturers. Some of them's only about half this long. And, and then there's other ones that's like this CST, the one that we sell also. You see it has all of these adjustments on it to take all the different bases too. So this is real popular, usually for the uh, rifle conversions of the Ben Van Dyke version. And you just simply put that over there and screw it on. You got to get it on straight and line it up. All right, now since this is a pistol, it has a barrel shorter than 16 inches. So that means you have to qualify to the BATF rules and regulations. That means it cannot have a butt stock. So there's a plug that screws in the back here where you're but stock would go if you had it on a rifle or carbine version. All right, we have this all assembled, ready to go. Since it does not have the last shot hold open and we would like to have the 25 rounds, this is a BX-25. It goes in there just like it normally would. Fire it until you're empty. Hit the release. There you go. All right, we're ready to go test fire this pistol. When you assemble it, it's basically the same as if you was assembling a rifle. Only difference is, when you assemble the rifle, you will add on this collapsible buttstock and a longer barrel. And our barrels are all tension fiber barrels at the present time. But you can custom make a barrel of most any configuration you want in case you don't like the carbon fiber tension barrel but that's the only way we can get it as light as possible. So we're ready to go test fire. 
All right, we're ready to test fire the pistol. 25 round BX 25. Sure it's in, latched. Let the bolt fly forward. Looks like it works. And we'll go test fire the rifle since we're out here. We're right there. There you are. Well, you'll notice even shooting a 22, you always got to remember to wear safety glasses and earmuffs. Safety first, regardless what. So that's the tactical 22.